And here we are years later after Aaron Russo points out that this is not a capitalist or free market country, but is really socialist. In fact, here's the cover of Newsweek. We are all socialists now. But this isn't the socialism the public thinks it is, where the government robs from the rich to give to the poor. Actually, it's always the big banks, the elites throughout history that fund socialism. They want to use the middle class's money uh, to basically domesticate the working class and expand the size of government so they can basically, in the end game, eradicate the middle class and have a giant submass of uneducated slaves who have no chance of ever rebelling against the tyranny and a tiny elite in control of it all. And that is the very nature of this new world order system. They are using big government to strangle competition, to uh, take control of the people, to break up the family, to basically set up a global plantation or neo-feudalist state. Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he, well, we were, he was at the house one night and uh, we, were told, we were talking and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before women's live. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up the family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two prim the primary reasons for women's live, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure. You know? Aaron, did you know that Gloria Steinem, in one of her own books, now admits the CIA funded Miss Magazine? No, I had no idea about that. No, I never heard that. Yeah, we're gonna CIA funded Ms. Magazine? Funded Ms. Magazine with the stated goal of taxing women and breaking up the family. No kidding. I never heard that. Well, Nick told me. I mean, I mean, I know it, but not because I know the CIA was involved in it. Well, she, Gloria Steinem was proud of it. Oh, the CIA wanted to help me help women. No and, kidding. And so they funded it. Yeah, and, and of course it's divide and conquer. Right, and, of course. And what they do is they focus in, obviously, on real problems. Women were getting shafted in many ways. But the elite didn't, wasn't planning to help them. They were planning to really shaft them and take men away from them. Look at what they did with black families. You only had about 10% illegitimacy 50 years ago uh, in black communities, and now it's over 90%. And look at welfare. You were going to give you some money, but you can't have a man in the house. Right. And, and so that was further to degrade the family, yeah. totally destroyed, uh, and, and, and now illegitimacy is over 50% in the general population. Right. Well, see, the whole thing is, is these people control the money. So they make all the rules, you understand? And, and they put whatever rules they want into effect. And the truth is America has really become a socialist, communistic country. And nobody, everybody says it's a capitalist country. It's not a capitalist country. You know, how can it be capitalistic when you have a central bank? <laughs> That's the first, you can't, it can't be, you know? The it's money, a planned economy. It's a planned economy. It's, it's, it's a phony. If they want to create prosperity, they just print... Dollars, they just make dollars or put digits into the economy. And, they, and then now you have prosperity. You don't have real prosperity. You don't have real manufacturing. You just have, you just have money being injected in. It's an infusion of credit. Which only being, makes the government go into more debt. Into more debt. Ferris Air is poison to our country. Of course it is. It's poison. Whoever makes the money makes the rules. Rothschild said that. And they make the money. Why are we allowing these private bankers to make the money for our country? It makes no sense. Why are we paying interest to these banks to make money for us when the government can do it itself without paying interest and without all that debt? There's no answer to that question, and it's the question no politician will raise. Everybody talks about America's debt, how much debt we're in. We're in debt because we have to borrow money. But we don't have to borrow money. They designed it so we go into debt. Exactly. We can create the money and back it by gold so, you have, so they can't create too much of it so you don't have the inflation. 
and then do what the founding fathers gave us. But instead, the bankers make the money, they control the government, they buy the politicians, they tell us who gets into office, you have computer voting, that's a fraud. They do whatever they want to do to us. They do whatever they want to do to us, and it has to stop. My friendship with Nick Rockefeller was one where we, were, uh, we expressed ideas to each other and thoughts and philosophies, and he wanted me to become part of what they were doing and for me to become a member of the CFR and uh, offered various business opportunities for me to get involved in and for me to um, not take up the fight or the battle that I've been taking up in the past, you know, to drop that idea because what was the point of my fighting for the people? I was a guy who was very successful in the movie business and I saw the truth of what was happening. I tried to express it to the people and rather than having me express it to the people, they wanted me to join their side because I was a mover and a shaker and rather than me opposing them, to join them. It was real simple and uh, he tried to recruit me into that situation and um, I didn't go for it. Did he get angry when you didn't go for it? No, no. And uh, you know, it's like, you know, I remember one time he said to me, you join us, so you, so you have an ID card, Aaron, you know, you have a chip, and your chip will say KMA on it. And uh, I said, what does KMA mean? He said, it means kiss my ass. <laughs> and anybody stops you, a cop or whatever, and you show them your card or your chip, and uh, they'll, they'll not leave you alone, because you're one of us. One of the central pillars of tyranny is that the establishment is exempt from the laws that they pass for the rest of us. We saw it in Rome. We saw it with Hitler. We saw Richard Nixon saying, look, I'm the president. If I break the law, it's not illegal. We saw George Bush and Dick Cheney say that. We see Barack Obama continuing that, saying, I'm not going to give detainees real trials. I'm going to give them secret kangaroo military commissions trials, and we're going to uh, hold them in secret camps, and I've got executive privilege. It's the same thing over and over again. And one example of hundreds that are out there was a story back in April of 2008 out of the Orange County Register. And this backs up exactly what Aaron's talking about with Mr. Rockefeller saying, I got a chip in my hand, kiss my ass. Here's just one example of hundreds. Special license plate shield officials from traffic tickets. And it goes on to say that 996,000 plus vehicles in California are exempt from no insurance, reckless driving, speeding, uh, running through toll booths, running red lights, on and on and on, and who is it? It's state employees, it's federal employees that can go and get exempt, uh, it's police, it's government bureaucrats above the very laws they try to enforce on us. This is tyranny. And so literally, all over the nation, they've, they've tried to pass it in Texas but failed, they want it uh, where the police are above the law, where the government officials are above the law, where they have immunity, where they can't be prosecuted for crimes. Congress exempts itself for most of the tax laws and other laws that they uh, put on the rest of us. They're exempt from Social Security, and they get a pension that pays out on average five times what citizens get. Again, it's already happening. So the chip in the hand and saying they're above the law under the guise of national security, that's what the 1947 National Security Act and now this whole homeland security system is all about.